family, fans, and followers, welcome to the Zeta Nation. Thank you for joining us here for episode 44, our Double Horseman episode of the Zeta Nation. I am your incredibly talented host, Emperor Zeta, coming to you forever and a day from the Fortress of Solitude here in Etobicoke, Ontario. That's right, Canada. Special treat for this week, part one of our exclusive Exiting Korea interview with Prince Alexander, lead singer of the Drop Dead Pinups, the Duke of Korea, and my one and only brother. Plus, this week Fred is back for Comic Book Day. One quick thing this week, I just want to tell Rogers Cable to shove your boxes and digital crap up your derriere because I am going with Bell 5 because you've pissed me off one too many times. Anyways, that is enough from me. Let's get on with the show. Rock and roll, baby. And here we go. This week has been not so bad. Things are getting steady at night. My breast pump broke, so that makes me angry. So now I'm up all night feeding him. Tough with Catherine, she's still acting out a little bit and still with the potty issues, but slowly getting better. Of course, she strikes her for school now, so she has no choice, otherwise I'll send her home. He's a high maintenance baby, he's like his father. He's always demanding some sort of attention. It's like, why, why this, why, why that? He's always hungry, but he's, he's starting to get a little better. I think the uh, the growth spurt is over until the next one. So he's not demanding food every half hour to an hour, which is, you know, really full on, on, on the booties. He just has lots of gas. It wasn't too, too bad being uh, home by myself. Um, hubby's back to work, so uh, it's, it's been me flying solo. But my father-in-law gives me a hand here and there, like, he'll watch Anthony while I give her a bath. It's not too, too bad. I haven't gotten to the point where I want to buy out uh, Home Depot of duct tape for a cafe. We're, we're dealing, we're surviving. The end. This week is the WWE has finally introduced a brand new WWE Championship belt. This has been a long time coming. The spinner crap got old after six months, and CM Punk still thinks that he has a shot at the title. So he's gonna face John Cena on Raw in a match I know John Cena is gonna win. Can't say that it bothers me because John Cena versus The Rock 2 is something I actually want to see. It's gonna sell tickets and it's gonna kick ass. It's gonna break more records. Because then we will see the appearance of The Undertaker. He's coming after Punk. I think he's going to teach him about respect. It's close, guy. So the slow split up between Team Hell No is going beautifully. I'm really hoping to see a WrestleMania match between Daniel Bryan and Kane. Yes! 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 Next biggest news out of WWE this week? The surprising popularity and controversy coming with Jack Swagger's brand new character and brand new manager. But then Swagger had to go and fuck things up by getting caught that not an hour and a half after SmackDown for a DUI going 10 over the speed limit and in possession of marijuana. What would Bruno San Martino say? Bruno, you know. Now Zack Ryder did not get on Raw or SmackDown or even Superstars this week. It looks like they're going to forget about him till WrestleMania. That's if he's even considered for a match at WrestleMania. Last year he got to take the biggest loss of the night and I really hope they can find someone for him to job to. I am serious, bro! Even if he gets a match against Dolph Ziggler. I really want to see them go at it for the internet title and Zack Ryder walk away the winner in his hometown. Is it so much to ask that with WrestleMania coming from New York that Zack Ryder at least gets a match on the card? Sleep eating. <coughs> hey, don't shine that light in my face again. So you shine that light in my face again and it's gonna be broken. I'm just thinking of how I'm gonna break that thing so you don't poke it at me anymore. Almost a 
year. Be here next week. Since I flew into Incheon, Busan, Ulsan, Daejeon, Daegu, Gwangju, Seoul, Suwon, Incheon, Jinhae, Changwon, Masan. Masan is where I live, which is in the greater city of Changwon. Oh, and uh, Jinju. Uh, I'm going to travel to a few other countries on my way out. So Taiwan for nine to nine days. I'm gonna travel all around Taiwan because, like, if you take a train there, you can pretty much hit the top to the bottom all around the country in about ten hours. It doesn't take very long. Go watch some baseball, see some like you know things there, eat some food, which I'm excited for. Food's really good there. Then fly out of Taipei into Clark Field. Spend a night in Clark Field, and then the next day, take a plane to Boracay. It's like a tourist destination. It's like beaches and all that crap. <clears throat> and spend like five days there, and then fly out of Manila the next day. Fly into Bangkok. Spend two days in Bangkok, and then Chiang Mai. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's like a big tourist area there as well. And then go to an elephant park where you like get to feed elephants and like bathe elephants and shit. Um, and then after that, fly out of. Um, Chiang Mai to Hong Kong, well to Macau. Spend a night in Macau. Macau is like a big、uh, gambling city. It makes five times more than Las Vegas does, but、uh, it's the smallest. It's really small. It's got like a very small population. And actually, it was a Portuguese colony for the longest time. It wasn't an English colony like、um, like Hong Kong. So the food is like mixed with Portuguese food. It looks like Europe. Like it doesn't look like Asia at all. Then go to Hong Kong for another few days. Nora's gonna leave on the 25th, so I'll probably spend maybe two more days in Hong Kong to the 27th, and then try to get a flight out from Hong Kong into into Tokyo, <clears throat> spend a couple days in Tokyo, and then fly back home from Tokyo. That's right. It's comic book day, and we're here at Islington Station because we just signed Catherine up for kindergarten today. So we're headed down to Rob's to celebrate. Hopefully, we will see Fred there this week because last week he wasn't there. So we're headed down there. We got the Empress and the little Prince Anthony with us again. So you know what that means. Dum dum dum. Steps of Doom. That's right. So we will. See you soon, people. Uh, well, it looks like it's a double steps of doom today. No escalator, which means we gotta climb the stairs at Royal York. Yeah, this is why every station should have an elevator. So we're down here at Excalibur Comic. As you can see, we have Empress Mags in the stroller, and I probably will end up taking those up the steps of doom. Honey, you taking the stroller up? Once more into the breach. Should I say, Rob, if you're watching this, elevators, escalators, you should invest in them. <sighs> Excalibur Comics, 3030 Bloor Street West, upstairs above the Kingsway Theater. Woohoo! Fred's here this week. Okay, you missed me from last week. There's a lot of good artists in comics out to this week. Start off with the Savage Roll Green again. Frank Charles is one of the best artists in comics. And appreciate this stuff. So I would recommend number two of、uh, Savage World Green for those who enjoy artwork.、Uh, Thor, God of Thunder. This is another、uh, well-done book. Isaac Rivick,、uh, beautiful artwork. 
of stuff. There's a combination I like, Mark Wade and Francis Yu on the Incredible Hulk. This is with the Hulk uh, being in the good old Atlantis playing a tuma. Nice little to be continued for next week, so I would recommend again Indestructible Hulk. I keep forgetting it's Indestructible, not Incredible. Uh, good old Justice League of America, a well done book. Uh, Jeff Johns is working as a writer on it, and one of the one of the best Canadian artists is David Finch, and his work is beautiful. I would re recommend this book just for again, the, again, always like the artwork, but it's true. Surprise, surprise! <coughs> another book that came out, as well as the Justice League, the regular one. Uh, Throne of Atlantis, this is the conclusion uh, issue of the thing. It will be an epilogue, Aquaman number seventeen next week. But the countdown is on. The end of Morrison on Action Comics with Superman. It's kind of a pity that, you know, it's coming to end, but enjoy it while you can. So, Marvel Masterworks. Okay, this is the Jungle of Comics, and basically, this is the third volume. Might be the last because basically, for the next six months, there won't be any uh, Golden Age or uh, 50s uh, stuff coming out. So, yes, I love this stuff. I mean, it's a little on the expensive side, 75 bucks US, but I really enjoy this. So, you have Lorna, uh, Jungle Girl, actually it was Lorna Jungle Queen, but they demoted her. And then you have Jungle Tales as well as Jungle Action, another couple other series incorporated into the book. And I also like the fact that they put in like leopard skin, there's sort of a nice little touch there. But this is a nice little, little, little baby, and there you go. Okay, I was reading this book at Kashima Game, Cure for All Diseases, Holder Clark, C L A R K. You can catch her videos on YouTube as well. She's gone to actually done experience with her her patient unlike what I did I just tell you what I saw but she actually did the experiments with her, uh, her patients and so forth and she comes to a conclusion that through radio frequency you can actually kill a lot of diseases that, that we know of today like Alzheimer's uh, diabetes and so forth uh, she says it's a product of two things which is pollution from the environment and parasites she says uh, to get rid of the parasites, you can get a zapper. You can get the zappers like 20, 30 bucks on uh, eBay. They basically look like uh, more like a box run by a 9 volt battery. I have one I've been experimenting myself. And it just pulses the electrodes <coughs> into, your, into your veins. And that kills more or less uh, all the parasites in your body. But you also have to use detoxify your body, she says, because uh, there's certain things like even mercury in your in your tooth and all that stuff that also affects your hormones and uh, your, your, your general health as well. So the main thing is to do a kidney and a liver flush, which you can also find. In your tooth. So ba basically, she's saying a low voltage, like from a 9 volt battery, can kill almost any and all viruses. Therefore, you've seen recently, I guess, the new SARS virus that's come out. According to her theory, you can also kill that through the electro, I guess, radiation of, uh, from the 9-volt battery. All uh, diseases have parasites which help uh, create the diseases we have. So if you can get rid of the virus, in which this thing also gets rid of, conceivably can get rid of SARS and, and so forth. Even uh, a doctor, Robert Beck, B-E-C-K, and he claims the same sort of like electrical uh, pulsing of the blood can also get rid of AIDS and so forth. If you increase the frequency high enough, you can also affect humans. But a 9 volt battery would only kill more or less uh, the lesser parasites and, 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 and worms and so forth in the body. But if you make it high enough, you can also affect humans as well. Unfortunately, time's up once again. Thank you for joining us here at the Revolution that is the Zeta Nation. Come back again next week for the second part of our Exiting Korea interview with Prince Alexander right here on YouTube. Go back and check out all of my other episodes right here on YouTube and subscribe to my channel, Emperor Zeta, right here on YouTube. YouTube. Don't forget to pick up your Drop Dead Pinups, Electric Night CD, check them out on iTunes, and follow them on Twitter at Drop Dead Pinups. Don't forget to follow me and my WrestleMania countdown every day on Twitter at Emperor Zeta. Head down to Excalibur Comics for all your comic book related needs. And listen up, you pencil neck geeks!